Shanghai is in the grip of an outbreak that has led to a complete lockdown of its 26 million people. Which city would Chinese Chairman Xi Jinping visit to show his concern? It isn't Shanghai. He visited the southernmost province, Hainan province, which is home to one of the country's most important seed production bases. It goes to show that Xi seems more concerned with the rice bowls of the Chinese people. On April 10th, during his visit to a seed research lab, Xi stressed that seed is the key to food security in China. Only by clutching Chinese seeds with their own hands can they hold the Chinese rice bowl steady and achieve food security. He said that to achieve independent control of seed sources, seed technology must be self-sustaining and self-reliant. It's a matter of great strategic importance. The seed lab Xi visited was established in May 2021. According to Chinese official media, thousands of scientists and technicians across the country gather there every winter and spring for seed cultivation and production. In a season like winter, only in this place, crops like sorghum, corn and rice can complete a growth cycle, making it possible for us to plant the crops for another harvest. Therefore, we can reduce the seed breeding time by half. We have to secure the high yield once we sow our seeds and also maximize the use of our lands. We wanted to turn some of the bare lands, for example, the 100 million hectares of saline alkali lands in China, into fertile farmlands. Seeds are the chips of agriculture, and a large part of the contribution to increased agricultural production is from the seeds. Food security is an issue that has been repeatedly mentioned by the Beijing authorities in recent years and they are focusing on the research bottleneck of the seed technology. China's Minister of Agriculture and Rural Affairs has also told the official media that seeds are the chips of agriculture, and arable land is the lifeblood of food production, and only by seizing these two key elements can we fundamentally ensure national food security. They are right. Seeds are the cornerstone of modern agriculture and the source of a country's food security. Seed research and development requires building up over a long stretch of time and large capital investment. From initial research to the commercialization of seeds, it generally involves three stages. R&D, field production, and seed commercialization, a cycle that typically takes about 10 years. Furthermore, the output faces uncertainty despite the costly investment. On February 21st, 2021, the Chinese government released the number one document of the central government for 2021, in which the development of the seed industry was raised for the first time and the risk of China's over-reliance on foreign seeds was described as a bottleneck. In early March 2022, China's state news agency, Xinhua News Agency, published an article in one of its journals. Ban Yuetan, China's most widely circulated political journal, the article suggested that China is now experiencing an epidemic of foreign seed dependency. For example, in China's potato hometown, Kushan County planted potatoes on 4,000 hectares in 2020. Atlantic potato, the imported seed potato, accounted for about half of its production. Corn is another relatively weak sector in China. The hybrid corn seed, Centaur 335, produced by Pioneer, a subsidiary of the DuPont Group, has been promoted for more than 10 years in China and is the main crop grown in the corn-producing regions of the Northeast and the North. China's dependence on foreign vegetable seeds is even more severe. The most common vegetables on Chinese people's tables, such as peppers, onions, carrots, eggplants, tomatoes, potatoes, broccoli, etc., many of them are grown from foreign seeds and some even depend entirely on them. For example, broccoli seeds are 80% dependent on imports, and beet and ryegrass seeds are more than 95% dependent on foreign countries. Most of the seeds of white radish, commonly eaten by 1.4 billion people in China, are imported from South Korea, and seeds of peppers, a most basic vegetable, are imported from Israel. China's agricultural experts acknowledge that some foreign seeds are indeed better. Take peppers, for instance. Domestic pepper seeds can only produce two crops. Foreign seeds can have three, and they look good, have market recognition, sell well, and are priced high. At present, 99% of the rice seeds used in China are sterilized seeds. 
It means that the grain they yield can't grow, forcing farmers to buy seed again the following year. The article concludes that China's seed industry is weak in innovation, and foreign seeds account for over 80% of certain crops, markets, and production stages. In some cases, there is even complete dependence on imports, posing significant strategic risks. The 2019 report, released by the China Seed Trade Association, shows that from 2014 to 2019, seed imports exceeded exports and China was a net importer of seeds year-round. Its dependence on foreign seeds was 72%. As early as December 2021, Xi emphasized in his speech at an important meeting that it was necessary to develop seed technology to break the bottleneck China faces. In addition to seeds, more than 90% of China's live pigs are bred from foreign breeds. According to the Chinese agricultural big data company, China Brick, the total number of imported breeding pigs in China exceeded 20,000 in 2020, setting a new record high. In addition to breeding pigs, China's breeding chickens, cattle, ducks, etc. are completely dependent on imports as well. From grains to vegetable seeds to livestock breeds, why do Chinese peasants choose foreign instead of domestic ones? The CCP now recognizes reliance on foreign seeds can be a trap, but previously, China's official policy was to support and vigorously promote foreign seeds. According to an official document on the website of the Chinese State Taxation Administration, an import tax exemption policy was applied to imported seeds between 2011 and 2020. This tax exemption policy aimed to support the introduction and promotion of foreign seeds and reduce the cost of production of agricultural and forestry products. Of course, under the CCP regime, the importation of such materials is at the discretion of the party-run agencies. Farmers and private businessmen have no power to decide whether to import or what to import, and there is plenty of room for corruption. Moreover, some professionals believe with the large population base and the improvement of living standards in China, the demand for certain products is too big and the supply is insufficient, which also leads to Chinese agriculture importing foreign seeds to maintain the balance of supply and demand in the market. Foreign seeds and breeding pigs are indeed better than their Chinese counterparts with advantages in all aspects. For instance, in general, foreign seeds aren't afraid of insects, have fewer diseases, and produce higher yields. Breeding pigs grow faster than native ones, have a higher feed conversion rate, produce more meat, and are healthier. Given such a contrast, no peasants are willing to use local breeding pigs. Foreign seeds are produced on a large scale, resulting in cheaper prices than native ones, which is yet another advantage. Domestic seeds are facing degradation and obsolescence, and agricultural research and investment can't keep up. Agricultural technology departments aren't investing in research and seed improvement, but are busy with making connections. Without the devotion to research, they turn to import seeds for replacement after seed degradation. Industry insiders generally believe that China is 20 or 30 years behind foreign countries in molecular breeding, genetic breeding, biological breeding, and others. It would be hard for China to catch up with its foreign counterparts in a short period of time. After more than a decade of relying on seed imports, why has the CCP suddenly developed a sense of urgency? They seem to fear that a sudden shortage of foreign seeds would lead to a national catastrophe like the shortage of chips did to China's manufacturing industry. Do foreign seed companies not want to sell to the Chinese market? The chip crisis in China is the result of a massive theft of technology by the CCP, which has led to sanctions from other countries in the form of laws or administrative orders. Normal transactions in seeds don't normally involve this. Yet naturally, small-scale theft of foreign seed technology does exist. For example, the wife and employees of the chairman of the A-share listed company were prosecuted and sentenced for allegedly stealing corn seeds developed by Monsanto, DuPont, and other companies. Why does the CCP suddenly publicize the seed crisis? In 2022, the international situation has changed again, with the Russia-Ukraine war shaking the global landscape. One possibility is that the CCP is taking some kind of precaution to prevent itself from being sanctioned in many ways, as Russia has been. If China's seed industry is cut off from its sources, it could indeed create an unpredictable crisis in a country with a huge population. 
The question is, however, what could the CCP have done to trigger sanctions like these? What's its agenda? On the first day of Xi's visit to Hainan, on April 10th, Xinhua News Agency released a document entitled, Opinions on Accelerating the Construction of a United National Market. It once again proposes a large domestic market cycle and claims it's a good support to resist external uncertainties. It deliberately pointed out that this document was issued on March 25, 2022, and stated that it was necessary to accelerate the construction of a unified national market from a global and strategic perspective. From early April until now, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson has lashed out at the U.S. and NATO several times at press conferences. The ins and outs of how the Ukraine issue has evolved into today's situation are very clear. It was what the U.S.-led NATO did that pushed the Russia-Ukraine confrontation to the volcanic crater. The U.S. didn't take any actions to ease the situation. Instead, it kept adding fuel to it, intensifying the conflict, and forcing other countries to take sides, which has generated a friend or enemy chilling effect. What could this represent other than hegemony and bullying? The U.S. has also been constantly spreading disinformation to smear China and distort China's responsible position of facilitating peace talks. It harbors the agenda to shift the blame, make provocations, profit from the situation, and seek space to hold down China and Russia simultaneously. What could this be other than hegemony and bullying? It seems that Beijing may have given up the opportunity to ease relations with the U.S. and Europe, and reverted to a planned economy in response to the West decoupling, or rather, it's prepared to do so. As a result, the issue of food security and the related issue of seed security have suddenly been elevated to the level of national security. The important task of not breaking the red line of food security lies at home. We must attach great importance to the long-term and steady development of domestic agriculture, reinforce support to modern agriculture, which includes the protection of cultivated land, the construction of high-standard farmland, the breakthroughs in seed industry, agricultural machinery equipment and facilities. We should rely on domestic resources to ensure basic self-sufficiency in grain and absolute security in staple food. It's worth noting the CCP is skilled at creating imaginary enemies and panic in order to arouse patriotic sentiments or party-loving sentiments among Chinese people. According to the CCP's propaganda, the party and the country are one body just like the slogan that the CCP has been chanting. Without the Communist Party, there would be no new China. But the truth is that China has existed for thousands of years, and the CCP has been in power for only 70 years. So is it possible for China to do away with foreign seeds in the near future? The staff of the Economic Reference News, a subsidiary of Xinhua News Agency, traveled to agricultural provinces for research on August 16, 2017. They were pressed by local peasants as to why China could build aircraft carriers and big planes like the C919, but it can't produce good vegetable seeds. In China, researchers make less than a small business owner who runs a small store on a busy street. The government doesn't really protect intellectual property rights, and it's hard for researchers to protect the fruits of their research and related revenues. There is even less incentive to invest in research. As in the case of the research and development of chips, for example, when many fraudulent domestic chip scams were uncovered, virtually no one involved was punished. What has happened is that after obtaining huge amounts of government funding, scammers have used the funds to create a huge protective network. So when they get caught, they can still escape safely with few consequences. With so many technology pirates and scammers, it's hard for real researchers to protect their work. In China, the seed industry is led by the government. Many government approvals are needed to start a specialized seed business, and if financial support is needed, the process is even more complicated. Government money is not for those who can do the work, but for those who can manipulate the situation. For individual researchers, how their competencies are assessed in terms of professional titles and research findings is practically at the discretion of administrative management. It's not something that is judged and decided by scientists and their peers. For example, a researcher's professional qualifications are based on the number of published papers and results. 
However, these papers can only be published in government-controlled journals, and only what the government has recognized is valid. People who are good at bribery and networking are able to get higher ranks faster and thus better salaries and access to research funding. Yet often they are the ones who have the most difficulty in enduring the solitude associated with scientific research and development. Therefore, the root cause of the seed bottleneck claimed by Chinese officials actually lies in the CCP regime. It is clear that a return to the failed planned economy is not the path that China should choose for its future development. After the extreme COVID-0 measures that have resulted in the self-inflicted economic disorder, the so-called internal market circle and unified big market are likely to bring about another major self-inflicted economic disorder in China.